when you first get in a relationship with somebody, there's that rosy tinted pink glasses that you're wearing and everything seems blimmin' sweet cuz the person cannot do no wrong. It's easy to love that person because you're not moved by choice, you're moved by emotion. Hey guys and welcome to another video uh, from Little Black Book. We're here talking to you about Christianity and uni. So guys, if you haven't watched my previous videos where I've talked about um, relationships, talked about um, finding churches, talked about obviously temptations at university, sex, everything like that to do with a Christian, go check them out. I'll put some links up there. I'll put some links down below. Little black bug, you know what time it is. You are Alpha and Omega We worship you, our Lord You are worthy to be praised Talking about loving God at first is easy Look, every time I talk about God, I want to talk about relationships because the two are completely linked, okay? You can't have one without the other, okay? This walk is called a relationship with God, RWG, okay? Listen, boom, let's start from the beginning. Loving God is easy at first. What do I mean by this? Those of you who got saved, and those of you who are watching this who are already saved will know what I'm talking about, and those of you who have not been saved yet and are, or are even coming to know Christ a bit more will start to see what I'm talking about now or in the future. Cool. Let me give you background. When I first got saved, everything was exciting, bruv. I go to church, there's always a message which seems to relate to me. I will go to Bible study, it seems like they're talking about a topic that I studied my word. I will go to worship services, they're singing the songs that I was singing in my bedroom. Hey, I'll go out, somebody will confirm, or some, somebody, was random, somebody random will speak to me about something, and I will know that God has sent that person to speak to me. I just knew it was happening. Oh, I'll go to the shop, somebody will give me um, money or something for free. I, I'm like, God is working mysteriously. I pray that God give me a new job, job comes. I say, God, give me a girlfriend. Let's stop there. So, anyway, listen, you know what I mean? Everything is working, pam, 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 pam. It's working sweet, cuz, you understand? And you may be experiencing this at university. You just got saved and you're just asking God for things. Like, God, do this, do this, do that. And it's working. I want to tell you this now. Nah. You better use this vim that you got right now, the energy you got right now. Read your word in abundance. Yeah? Stock up on prayers now. Why am I saying this? Okay. I was just reading Love Languages the other day, the book by Gary Chapman. And he said something which I already knew, but he just put a word on what I knew. Because I didn't know what to call it. When you first get in a relationship with somebody, there's that rosy tinted pink glasses that you're wearing. And everything seems blimmin' sweet because the person cannot do no wrong. It's easy to love that person because you're not moved by choice, you're moved by emotion. At that particular conjunction, there is something in that love that makes you overlook the shortcomings. That makes you ride out the, the, the bad times with ease. That makes you say, listen, I know that they may have this, but I love them still. Yeah, it's easy to say in that um, that conjunction. And it normally lasts between a year and two, yeah? Call it the honeymoon phase, yeah? And in that time also, you have the most energy, the most... You're like a baby, you're, sponge, you're able to sponge up information as quickly as possible. And you're not having to struggle to do this. That's relationships. And then after two years, you start to look at a person like, why? Why am I with you? Like, why do you keep leaving the toilet seat up? Now, why do you, why is it that every time I try to do this thing, you be negative about it? Why is it you was doing this? Why is it always doing this? And you start to now see the flaws and the holes in the person and then the things that they do. And now longer, it's no longer pretty. Honey moon phase done. You understand it? Honey moon phase done, baby. Cool. I don't know why I did that. That is mad. Anyway, so that honeymoon phase is done. It's finished, yeah? And so once you finish that, you're like, okay, now I've got to see where it's going to go. Like, do I really want to be in this? At that point, love becomes a conscious choice. I'm not saying it wasn't a conscious choice before, but now you have to act out love, yeah? And so, when it comes to now, we're relating back to Christianity. What's that got to do with Christianity? It's got everything to do with Christianity. Now you're at university, okay, yeah? And maybe you got, you're getting, you got saved. And sometimes your, your, your period of honeymoon phase comes down really quickly because the things that are affecting you are plenty. Cool. So now you've come out of the honeymoon stage and you're like, 
raw. It's got things raw, you know, like, fam, all these trials and tribulations I'll be facing, like, God, when am I gonna, when are you gonna allow me just to chill? God, when are you gonna allow, when are you gonna make this happen for me? God, you said you're gonna finish, you're gonna do this, you're gonna handle, you can handle everything, but you're not handling this, why? Why is this person allowed to abuse me and I have to let it go? You start to ask many more questions after the honeymoon phase is done. Why? Because it's now a conscious choice to love. The glasses are off. The glasses are off. And it's the exact same thing with you and your Christianity. As you've come to Christ and been born again, loving God at first is easy. What did I say in the beginning? I said, when you come into a relationship first, you're like a sponge. Information is able to be soaked like a baby does soak information. At that conjuncture, you who are getting saved yet, or are in the midst of being saved, or have been saved a short while, begin to attack that word of God. Attack your Bible. Begin to read it like no tomorrow. Because there's going to come a time where you feel like you don't really want to read your Bible and you have to push past that feeling and begin to read your word. I always say um, being a Christian is not about emotions, it's about the spirit. Which means just because I don't feel like reading my Bible means I have to read my Bible by choice. I don't feel like reading my Bible when I read my Bible. No, no, I read my Bible because I know it's life and death when I don't read my Bible. So I'm asking you, in your honeymoon phase, as you've just come to be saved by God, you're in university right now, read your Bible back to front as much as you can. Because all that information you're soaking is building a foundation for when you no longer have the honeymoon phase in you. When you no longer have the hunger to literally just like dive into God for two, three hours anymore. Because work is taking your time. The home is taking your time. You know, your, your, your parents are moving mad. University is moving mad. The coursework's moving mad. Yeah, you're not gonna have the time for that. Why? Because life comes eventually. You need to dive into that word because it's gonna build a foundation. So that when you do get to that point, when you're past honeymoon phase, the word of God is able to be what? The Bible says the Holy Spirit what causes remembrance. The right time and season. You get me? Cool. Second part of honeymoon phase. Love on God is so easy because you know what? In the beginning, like I said, God points you. In, it seems like he's guiding you in all the right directions. A bit like a, a baby, right? Baby starts crawling and the, the parents are like, Oh, no, you're going the wrong way. Let me just turn you. God will do that in the beginning. Oh, no, let me turn you. Oh, no, let me turn you. Oh, no, let me turn you. But it gets to a point where he says, I need you to begin to walk. And when you begin to walk, I also am going to take my... I'm going to just watch you. Because at that point, you shouldn't be on milk no more. You should be on meat. Like any parent, they can't baby the child forever. They need to get to a point where you have to come to maturity. A child who's 16, you can't treat him like he's 5 anymore. A child who's 18, you can't treat him like he's 5 anymore. A child who's 21, you can't treat him like he's 5 anymore. You expect there to be a maturity that comes. Now, some take a little bit longer than others, but you expect there to be a maturity by a certain date and age. And this is where you're going to find yourself. If you don't enjoy that honeymoon period where God is directing you, everything like that, and learn that it's God who directs you, when you come out of honeymoon phase, when you're now coming into to, to walking in maturity, which is meaning that you listen to the Spirit and you do according to what the Spirit says, you're going to find it very difficult. You'll be asking God, God, but you used, to, you, used to, you used to push me there. No, God's not pushing you there anymore. Now you're finding yourself going through situations you don't need to go through. And you're going through them and you're like, God, where are you? God's like, I'm here. But B, I thought you would have come to a mature place where you now can start to avoid certain things because I was directing you away from those things beforehand, but now you need to grow. You need to run on two legs. So it's very important that you begin to be observing in your honeymoon phase so that when you come out the honeymoon phase, you, you work out God, you look at it and say, God, this is how God talks to me. This is how God relates to me. This is how he speaks to me. This is how he moves me. Okay, cool. That means I need to make sure now that I'm no longer in the honeymoon phase and say it's what? not as easy just to obey, I need to make sure that I'm aware when God is speaking to me so that I can move. In the early days, link up with as many Christians as you can. Look, it gets to a point where it does get lonely. Let's not, be, let's not lie. But in the honeymoon phase, go to different Christian events, um, try to um, be as extrovert as you can when speaking to people about Christianity, um, evangelize as much as you can, 
um, attend as many church events as you can because all of this is building the foundation for when you no longer are in the honeymoon phase. Let me tell you something, when you can't the honeymoon phase, evangelism doesn't even seem no sweet anymore. Why do, why do I want to go out and evangelize the church for two, three hours, or even five hours, or four? But when you started, you was excited. Why? Because it was brand new. So when you've trained yourself, so this Bible says, train a child in the way to God and, not, and you will not depart from it. If you've not accepted the training in the honeymoon period, when you come out of the honeymoon period, it's going to be difficult too. You're going to be learning the lessons you should have learned in the honeymoon period. The honeymoon period is there to, it's to pamper you so that when you come out of it, you're ready to do certain things. You understand? If he's pampered you in evangelism, say, listen, you go out for five, six hours and you could do it. Now you know your standard. I can go out for five, six hours. Okay, when I do anything less, why am I doing less than I was doing before? It's not about working hard necessarily, but more the case of the fact that, okay, I could do that before. That was what I could do. How come I can't do it now? Because you now have to push yourself to do that. But you would have never known that if you weren't doing that in a honeymoon period. Do you see what I'm saying? The honeymoon period is so important. To be able to find out and decipher God's mind, see what he's saying, where does he want me to be, how does he act, how does he talk, all those things are very important, you know what I mean? Honeymoon period, sometimes you're going to ask God, in, a lot of times in the honeymoon period we ask God for certain things and God will show us, a bit like Gideon in the Bible, Gideon said to God, listen, God if it's you let the, the, this, this uh, material on the floor be, be, be damp but the ground be dry. And God showed him and then he said, God okay look, but let the material be dry, let the, let the ground be, be wet, make sure time's not going, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, he said those things and God showed him. Deep it though, we don't get another example of him asking God again later on. I've deeped it also in my relationship with God that when now I say, God, listen, show me this thing, I've got to be very specific, one. And two, also, I've got to be aware that God doesn't speak in the same way every single time. And I've also got to be aware, I've got to be attentive and put myself strategically in a place where I can hear God. Because if I don't, he will say it, but because the honeymoon fade is over where when he sh it's like almost when he talks, he's shouting and you can hear it. Now, when there's things that are distracting me, I can't hear it. I won't be able to hear it because it's work, I need to make money, there's my family, there's girlfriend, there's, 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 there's so many different issues that are affecting me now. I won't be able to hear it because I'm now at the honeymoon phase. When you're in the honeymoon phase, you ignore everything else and you've got a tunnel vision, but now you're out of it. You've opened yourself to so many different voices. And it's what Matthew 6 verse 1 says, he said, listen, disciples, come out of the multitude and come into the solitude, okay, where I can teach you the Beatitudes. As I said before, your will, um, your will to do the opposite of what God has said to you to do is lessened because you're so focused on that individual. You know when you love someone at the beginning, you just want to do things for them. No matter what they say, you want to do it for them. After the two years are done, oh my God. They say anything and your world's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I think in the first two years, if God had asked me to lie on my side here yeah, in the middle of a town centre, I would have done it. Just like Elijah. If you ask me now to lie on my side, say what? Why? Because the honeymoon phase is over. So you ask me to do mad things. I don't have the I don't have the urge to do those mad things anymore. The desire is gone because after two years, you now have to be conscious in your love. It's an action. It's a choice. You understand? Also, in the honeymoon phase period, you're able to recover from bumps and scrapes much more easier. What I mean by that is, let's say God send, let's say you go to evangelize, okay? And you get rejected by five people. Cause you're in honeymoon phase, you're like, I'm still excited, I don't mind, five people, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going. After two years, you get one person rejecting you. You're like, flip. Oh God, I thought that, you know, you wanted me to speak to them, did they? And you're discouraged, why? Because honeymoon phase is over, yeah? And now you're realizing, look, I can't, you start to realize how fragile you are because in the first two years you was not thinking about you you was thinking about how amazing god is you had the pink glass on god is amazing god is this god is that and after two years it doesn't happen it's like oh damn god like this is mad like come on help me out here G. being born again first love at first sight um you don't care about your reputation you don't care what you have to do that's what i'm saying you don't care where god sends you you just want to go and i want to just encourage this guys from you listen if you're in the honeymoon phase of God right now, suck it all up. Yeah, because when the time comes and the rose pink glass comes off, you need to be ready to now move by action. That's why in the first two years, when people start fornicating, moving mad, it doesn't really affect them. Then after the first, after the two years, and they're still fornicating, moving mad, fam, they start to ask questions. God, am I really saved? Like, what am I doing, God? Like, rah, 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 rah. Like, I can't even get back on the bandwagon to, to serve you, God. 
Why? Because, you see, as Gary Chapman put it, your love tank is empty. Yeah? It's empty because you've been moving mad. And in the beginning, you were running on fumes of the of you run on fumes of that honeymoon phase. Now the honeymoon phase is done. There's no none, none of that adrenaline, none of that fumes running. It's now just you and God. And now you're like, uh, God, I've done it again. Uh, I don't think I can continue this, God. I don't think I continue just serving you because you know this, this, and that. And you start to concentrate on you again, and not focus on God. You don't focus on Christ. You understand? I want you to deep it. Anything you're trying to overcome, is overcome by focusing on Christ and your relationship with God. That's why Peter started walking on water. So anyway, listen guys, like I said, university is not easy, I understand. If you're born again and saved just newly, um, welcome to the family. And I want to say to this guy, enjoy the honeymoon phase. Because when it's done, that's when you realise, I've got to actively love God. Guys, I appreciate you. Stay blessed. Alright? Heaven forever. Appreciate you. Boy, shout.